Crossroads Media. This team right now is in a good position. And I don't know if you would necessarily feel that or know that if you talk to the fan base. They won 11 of their last 14 games. And this is unfortunately coming off of a loss against the Chicago Bulls last night. No Joel and B. James Harden had a tough day at the office while Levine did some dirty things from behind the arc and made some excellent shots. And it is what it is. You tip your cap. But I just feel like there's so much hostility with this team that they can't do anything during the regular season that would satisfy anybody until the postseason. Now, I understand that they need to get over the hump, but I think you have to separate the two unless you want to drive yourself crazy and just bang your head against a wall. When you look at the current standings and when you look at the Sixers being 23 and 15, knowing that James Harden missed a lot of time, Knowing that Tyrese Maxey missed a lot of time. Knowing that right now there's no Joel Embiid. And at times throughout the regular season, Daniel House was missing time. And you had uh, DeAnthony Melton missing some time. Just sprinkled in throughout there. P.J. Tucker hasn't really performed to the level that we would like him to perform. So there's a lot of variables here. And the team is still 23-15. and 15. At one point, rolled off an eight-game win streak. Okay? And it's like they won eight straight games. And the day they lost to the Washington Wizards after winning every home game during that seven-game span, they went on the road on Christmas Day, won an awesome game late in the fourth quarter to win uh, against the Knicks. So now it's eight straight, and it's like, oh, you lost to the Wizards. Doc's got to go. What? The Boston Celtics, who has the best record in the Eastern Conference, just allowed 150 points to the OKC Thunder without their best player in SGA. If you roll off eight straight, you're due for a bad one. It just seems like whenever they do anything good, it's that's what they're supposed to do. And then whenever there's a hiccup, it's ridicule every single person within the organization. I'm not the biggest Doc Rivers fan in the world, okay? If you tell me that down the end of the road, they get to the second round, and I have to see how it plays out, right? Because context matters. But if they lose in the second round, and I think Doc Rivers does a poor job coaching and all that, I'm okay with moving on. I'm okay with seeing a new face. But to me, he's in the Brett Brown category where he can't do anything anymore. And even when he does pushes the right buttons, nobody gives him credit for what he does right. Everyone's disgusted because they won. They won against the Pacers, but they allowed a lead to slip before they found a way in overtime. I watched the Sixers have a phenomenal win during that big homestand against the Clippers where they came back in the fourth quarter and won. My point is the Sixers sometimes, believe it or not, you won't know this. But sometimes the Sixers in the fourth quarter come back against an opponent. Nobody gets credit for that. But when an opposing team makes a run against the Sixers, the Sixers suck. But the Sixers do it to other teams too. The Sixers are the team sometimes in the fourth quarter that make special runs and they blow out a team with a massive 18-6 to six run with a couple minutes to go. That stuff happens too. It's almost like it's just the nature of the sport. And while sometimes it's frustrating, when you look at the first place team in the Western Conference, the Nuggets, they're 26 and 13. The Sixers are 23 and 15. The Sixers are in the same exact range as everybody else. The Celtics have a little bit of a lead in the Eastern Conference, but the Milwaukee Bucks are 25 and 14. My question becomes, what would satisfy people? What record? What record would satisfy anyone right now watching this team? Because them being where they are right now, it, it kind of makes sense on who they are. I don't think they're underperforming. They're not overperforming. I think at this point, their record describes who the 76ers are, which is in range with everybody else. I'm just I'm just a little lost and a little confused because when you get the pulse of the fan base, you would think that they have seven wins. You would think that they have ten wins. Believe it or not, on Thursday's show of the best show ever, it was about Doc Rivers, 
because it was the day after that game against Indiana, which they won, by the way. De'Anthony Melton, some big shots made. Harrell, electric, with some big-time authority, with energy and, and freaking out and showing all sorts of emotion. James Harden on the defensive end late. Maxi making a big play. Yeah, you know what? The other team made a run. But the Sixers, when needed, hit the reset button and went out there and did their job to win in overtime. They won the game. And it was, oh, Doc's got to be fired, this and that. We had a caller say that Joel Embiid is probably like Dwight Howard, where he won't win anything until he's a bench player on a team that has a LeBron James. That, that's, that's what we get now. That's what we get now. And you know what? He's not an outlier. There's a lot of people that still despise Joel Embiid. They don't like the way he plays. He'll, he'll drop 40 consistently. Now, if he doesn't drop 40, it's looked at as a bad game. They just don't appreciate what you have in them. And there's more of them than you think. Now, it's not a it's not a it's not a majority. But there's more out there than you think. It's not just one or two. And I feel that's problematic. I think you have to separate the frustration of losing in the second round and still find a way to admire what you're doing. James Harden is giving you 15 assists, 13 assists, 21 assists. He's finding ways to get this team established. Now, he had a stinker last night against Chicago. But he's had some really nice moments. And last year, you trade for him at the trade deadline, rightfully so. You trade that bum Ben Simmons. You get yourself a James Harden. But he's not healthy. So with 15, 20 games to go, you say, hey, James Harden, who's not healthy? Go figure this thing out. It doesn't happen that way. Teams like Milwaukee have played together for a long period of time. Teams like the Boston Celtics going on the run they had last year. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. These guys have played together for a bit of time. You have a primary ball handler with his first full season with the team, playing with the big man with the skill set of Joel Embiid, trying to incorporate a Tyrese Maxey skill set. It's not the easiest thing in the world. And with them being 23 and 15 at this point, while guys are being in and out of the lineup, I, I, I just, I don't know. I feel like the panic button's being reached. And I think it's, the, the, the narrative is they're never going to win anything. So if you feel that way, don't watch. Don't watch. I think that's what upsets me the most. Because there's so many Sixers fans disgusted and think it's going to end in failure anyway for some reason, whether they don't believe in Doc, whether they don't believe in Harden, whether they don't believe in Joel, no matter who it is, no matter who, maybe they think P.J. Tucker is such a disaster that you'll never win with him, whatever it is, if that's how you feel, then don't watch. Because you already know the outcome. I don't know what the outcome is. It very well may be they fall short again of an Eastern Conference final. At that point, yes, I will demand some change, even though I don't think that means Doc Rivers is one of the worst coaches in the history of the world, like some would say. Because the same people who wanted Brett Brown fired were the ones stoked saying we finally got a real coach in Doc Rivers, and now here we are. Doc Rivers is a clown, and he's now in the territory of he can't do anything right, which is not the case.